really compelling email from Dan in Toronto a few days back, and I started to draft a response, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought I should address Dan's concerns in a wider venue. It was a pretty long email, but I pulled a quick excerpt that I think sums up the point. Dan starts off by admitting that he really enjoys the show and it makes him laugh, but he wonders what the cost of those cheap laughs really are in the following paragraph. Quote, The problem is one of productivity. What do we as a movement gain by being so antagonistic towards religion? It's hard to imagine a believer that listened to your show having any reaction but a calcification of their dogma. Ultimately, you're providing the caricature that religious leaders need to smear atheists as cruel, angry, and uncaring. And to what end? Have you done more in the end than simply affirm opinions already held? Have you done more than preach to the choir? Okay, so as to providing a caricature to the opposition, that may or may not be true, but forgive me for believing that those Christians would have found something to be pissed off about regardless of what I do. But I don't want to be dismissive here. I have a lot of respect for Dan's opinion here, and he's not the first person to bring it up. Hell, Heath Lucinda and I had this discussion in depth before we recorded episode one. Now, clearly, we fell on the good outweighs the bad end of the argument, but I do feel that people like Dan still deserve an explanation. The question is basically one of purpose, and the tone of Dan's email suggests that he believes that the purpose of an atheist show should be outreach to the religious community. Now, I don't mean to oversimplify the objection, but the implication is here that the first goal of an atheist show should be one of PR. That does make sense, of course, when you belong to a group that's seen as less trustworthy than rapists, but I also think it sells us short. There are plenty of great atheist outreach podcasts. The Atheist Experience, The Thinking Atheist, Reasonable Doubts, and American Atheist. These are all great shows that I could recommend to a religious person if they wanted to know more about atheism. But that doesn't mean that the only purpose an atheist show can serve is outreach. You know, I don't mean to downplay the importance of reaching out to the religious people too much, but I fear that if we focus on nothing but that, we're going to lose sight of an equally important element of the movement, mobilization. It's not enough to sway minds if we can't also sway the feet that they're connected to. So when we started this show, we tossed outreach out the window, and I try to make that clear in the first 12 seconds of every show. In fact, I tried to make it clear in the first two words of the title. I'd have called this thing the Fuck Jesus Show if I thought iTunes would still promote it. You know, religious people are welcome to listen to this show, but they're not invited. This show isn't for them. They have enough. This is for us. You know, I've gone to church before, and I've never complained afterward that the pastor didn't include the atheist point of view in his sermon. I've never written an angry letter to a televangelist for not being nicer to an atheist when he tells them that they're all going to hell. If a Christian listens to this show and gets pissed off about it, I look at it like a neighbor showing up at your barbecue uninvited. You welcome him in, you give him a beer, and then he starts bitching because there's no vegetarian menu. It's a barbecue, asshole. You know, look, there's a time and a place for nice, but there's a time and a place for fuck you as well. And in this movement, we need both. Nice is great for outreach. It's good for PR. Nice is good for winning converts and softening our image. But fuck you is good for rallying the troops. Fuck you is good for boiling the blood. Fuck you is good for reminding people why they got active about atheism in the first place. And what's more, when people are trying to shove their religion into your schools, your government, and your life, fuck you is the only correct response. So the end result is that I spend a lot of time preaching to the choir. But what's wrong with that? Keep in mind that despite the connotations implied in the expression, the preacher man does still preach to the choir. You kind of have to. You can't assume that somebody who read The God Delusion back in 2009 is still as fired up about it as she was when she put the book down. We all have to be reminded from time to time that these battles are still being fought and we still need all hands on deck. So thanks for the email, Dan, and if you'd like to continue the conversation, I look forward to your response. But keep in mind that you started your email with the words, I really enjoy your show. I'd argue that that's enough. If I make some atheists laugh, I've done as much as I need to do to justify the effort. I don't think it's fair to judge everything done in the name of atheism solely through the lens of its effect on religious people. Does singing hymns help Christians convince atheists that there's a God? No, but that's not the point of singing hymns. We accept that Christians can do Christian things for Christian reasons. Why can't atheists do the same?